Okay. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Thank you for clicking on the video. Um, George here from Discover God. I got a special guest today. We have Shara Meredith, the CEO of Peculiar. I think I said it right. Oh, <laughs> I hope, I, I, we don't use that word anymore. It's weird. No, it's good. <laughs> I, I, I said it good enough, though. I think people people understand what I said. Peculiar. Um, uh, Shara. <laughs> Shara is going to share uh, a little bit about her story, um, a little bit about her inspiration, and she's just going to tell us what she does. So, Shara, can you just quickly introduce yourself? Let us know who you are and what you do, please. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I am the CEO of a company called So Peculiar. I live in Knoxville, Tennessee, um, and I work part-time and then I'm part-time stay-at-home mom, um, help her out at church and um, assist in nonprofits and all those other kind of things that we do. So, so video games is a part-time thing for me, but it's something that I'm really passionate about and uh, something that I started unexpectedly about six years ago. I really just thought I was going to do a project and uh, something that I wanted to create for my kids. And it turned into a company. It turned into something that I really, uh, really love to spend my time on. And so now I'm pursuing it more, um, not necessarily full time, but more intensely and more seriously with more projects in mind. That's amazing. Now, you were sharing um, a little bit with me about like how it is that you actually started to like make a video game. Can you share with like our audience how it is that like you started to to actually make a game, please? Because yeah, I think it's amazing. Yeah. So my, um, I have two boys and they love video games. They get really involved in the stories of their games. Um, they like to act out the stories of their games. So they'll play Zelda. And then when it's time to turn it off, they're like, they're gonna be Link and have the adventure. So um, my oldest, when he turned five, he asked me for a big kid game. And we had really talked up the big kid thing. We said, you know, you're going to put your own plate in the dishwasher, this big kid. Uh, but he had a whole different idea of what that meant. And so he wanted a big kid game. And we sat down together and tried to find something that met his idea of that and something that was age appropriate. Bonus points if he could do it by himself, because I also had an 18 month old um, and we just couldn't find a whole lot. There were a few things that we tried, some that we'd already played, but there just wasn't a lot out there. And I was at this really cool, fun place in my faith where I was believing that I could ask God for big things and he might actually, he might actually give me something big and he might actually want to give me something. And so I just asked God for a big kid game. And I uh, had an idea for a story. So I literally Googled how to make a video game six years ago, um, maybe even like six years ago today, because my son just turned 11. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I, you know, I found a few blogs that said it was, it was expensive. It was hard. It was long. Decided that's probably not, that's probably not for me. I'll just not do that. Uh, but I couldn't shake it. And so I kept, I kept Googling and I kept feeling like, you know, the voice in my head was just do the next thing, just do the next thing. So I sent a few emails and asked some questions and started just chasing this rabbit trail um, and eventually led me to the Christian Game Developers Conference up in Portland, Oregon, and met some really cool folks up there who encouraged me and um, helped me to figure out you know, how to actually get started in this. And and it was really just one little step at a time. And before too long, I had I had learned so many things. I was in so deep, we just couldn't stop. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. I love that. Like you prayed for like a big, did you say a big game, right? Yeah. And like big game is what he wanted for his little kid like, heart. <laughs> and like God gave you like a big idea, mm -hmm. right? And then I think it's like, it, it's kind of like what God does, right? Like he gives you the seed yeah. and then like it, ha it, grow it has to grow, right? But I think it's like up to us to like water it. And I think for you, the watering was going to the conference and like picking up these skills and stuff like that. And uh, I just find that absolutely amazing because I know a lot of people, um, they wouldn't do that. Like, you know that, right? Like most people would not do what you did. Like, like I'm sat here and like, my story is similar yet so much different because I'm like, nah, like I don't make games. I can't make a game. Like I do, like I study theology, but not, not, you know, game design or whatever. Yeah. But you just went the whole route. Like that is 
That is amazing. Um, do, so do you want to tell us? Go ahead. Sorry. I say it's a little bit crazy. Some some days it feels good crazy. Some days it just feels crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah definitely definitely i'm sure i'm sure it does feel like that it, but that is typical of like a an entrepreneur or a pioneer do you know yeah. what i mean yeah. i think what you need to do is get around other crazy people right and then like you guys kind of fuel each other up um right. tell us a little bit more about like your project like you know the game um yeah. you were kind of sharing with me before about um kind of so the things that you wanted to share with your son and stuff like that can you can you tell us like, tell the audience about that type of stuff because I thought that was just great for sure yeah the the story that came to mind was really um it's a metaphor I don't know how else to explain it but a metaphor for my own story um I have a kind of a harder story that I don't tell my kids about but through the hard stuff is that's how I know what I know what I know about who God is you know that's how he has spoken to me and showed himself to be so real and so that stuff is what I want to pass on that's the stuff I want them to get and if I could have grasped that he was actually personal that he was close and all those things when I was their age uh, life probably would have been a lot different for me and so you know my, your hope always as a parent is that your kids have something better than what you did uh, they have a better start and that you can equip them to do life well. And so I really thought, you know, maybe, maybe a game is a way for them to have some of these experiences without actually walking through the hard stuff. And that through a game, they could actually learn some things about who God is. Um, and so the project that we're developing is called Closer Than You Know, um, kind of based on my own story of of coming to learn that God is not just some distant narcissist who's disappointed in me, but he's actually, he's actually really close and he actually cares about all the details of my life. And that's the thing I want my kids to know. So we created this fantasy story about a young girl from another planet and she's collecting hope as a little sparkly dust. And she just, she, that's collects cool. she wants to take it back to her planet. And, um, and a lot of things happen along the way, but you know, but I just, I write from my own experience and things that I've learned about God and, and things, questions that I've had and, and times where I, I didn't think he was close, you know, and I wanted to put all that in there so that they can kind of walk through that in their own way. Wow. That is so cool. I love that she collects hope. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously like you're a super creative, imaginative person that you just have this stuff like pumping through you like all the time. Um, and I, I love it. And, and I guess, so what age group would you say that this is for? Yeah, we're, uh, my heart is for those five to eight year olds, those kids who are, they're just learning how to read. They're just starting school. And, you know, they feel like in their minds, they are their big stuff. Um, mm. They're ready to handle life at that age. But reality is they do need a lot of help. Um, they still have to ask a lot of questions and that can, that can also be a real frustrating season of life. And so, um, so we wanted to create an experience that they could do independently that felt like, um, felt like they were doing something hard, but that they could actually navigate on their own. Um, I suppose being a mom of, of multiple kids, you know, I, I really like it when I find something they can do on their own. And mm -hmm. so, uh, so I wanted to do that for the parents sake too. And, um, yeah, we're, we have puzzles. It's a, um, it's an adventure game kind of based on the old point and click genre that I grew up in, but we've, we've made a lot of changes and modifications to make it age appropriate for those young ones. That's really cool. Um, is, is it going to be a mobile game? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. First on mobile. I'd also love to release on steam and on switch. I think yeah. those platforms would be really great for that age as well. That is absolutely amazing. Um, can I ask you another question? Um, as a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. And as a Christian who sees the value of video games, that mm -hmm. you see how much your boys love video games. And obviously it's a huge um, feature of youth culture, even adults, right? Like more adults probably yeah. play video games statistically, right? Mm -hmm. um, but as a Christian, you know, sometimes I'm sure you, you can agree with me that there's kind of like a tension or some type of friction between um, Christians and video games, the Christian engagement of video games. Should video games be played by Christians? Should do video games belong in Christian spaces? Can we teach the Bible? Can we teach, like, can we introduce people to Jesus 
through a video game, which is essentially what you are doing, what yeah. would you say to the naysayers um, about, you know, the, the doubters who are like, you can't do that? What do you have to say to them? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think there are tools like anything else. Um, I think when movies became really popular, the church said we don't really want any part of that. And we pulled out for a long time. And, um, and we're just now, uh, you know, we are getting back into creating movies as, as a body of believers. And you've really seen the quality, I think, of Christian film has, has been rising over the last several years. Um, but when Christian movies first started coming out, um, there, was, there was a lot of conversation about the quality that we were producing. And I think it's because we set ourselves back when we said we're not going to be a part of that. Uh, and now here we have this opportunity as believers to either say, we're not going to be a part of that about video games. We're just, we don't understand it. So we're going to say no altogether. Or we can say, let's jump in and figure out what's so special about this medium and actually engage with it and see what the Holy Spirit could do. Mm. And it just might be that, you know, I mean, from what I know about God, I don't know about you, but he comes to me. You know, like it's, it's not all up to me to find him. He's pursuing us all the time. And I think he's pursuing us in that space. I think he's pursuing people who don't know him or even who do know him, but, but maybe would he'd like to share another piece of his heart. Mm. And I think that space is this fair game. And so as believers, I think we have every opportunity to take the Holy Spirit there and see what he wants to do. I absolutely agree. And I love, I love that because one of the things that I firmly believe is that the Holy Spirit can operate anywhere, mm -hmm. right? And that includes digital spaces, video game environments. Um, there is no limit. Um, and I just think that, you know, when we have people with your heart, with your intention, with your vision, and with your creativity, um, you put that into a video game, and then the Holy Spirit comes as well. And it's just, it's just going to be something amazing. I think right, and yeah. uh, and because and because of the popularity of video games, I think that you know we have the opportunity to really impact like a generation. Yeah, you know what I mean. Especially, so I live in England, and where you know, a church attendance by young people and children is you know historically low. Um, you know, church attendance down, video game use is up. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I'm not saying it's like they're not necessarily pinned against each other, but um, if we see that something does have the hearts and the imagination of children, actually, I think that as Christians, what we could do is um, use that feature of culture, adjust it, and point it towards Christ. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's what we're called to do, actually, right? Because I think that historically, the church, Christianity, we've always engaged with culture right there's been theologically reflective paintings carvings sculptures throughout the ages right like there's always been like paintings of jesus there's always been like carvings of like the virgin mary everywhere and, th and those are the same type of engagements with culture now it's just, now it's just video games it just looks something different um but i think that christians we just kind of we get amnesia <laughs> right when it comes to engaging with culture because you, you brought up a very good point about the film films came out they were condemned right like they were like don't watch don't watch films they're bad i remember i read once that um when the guitar was first introduced to worship it was condemned because of its association with like rock and roll music and the devil yeah and you think about that and you're just like that's absolutely insane right because nowadays you couldn't even like if your church doesn't have a guitar, you're like, it's not church, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like every yeah. church has to have a guitar for <laughs> worship. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you made so many good points there. And I like, it's just amazing to see a, uh, you from a parent's perspective, right? Like have this want and a desire for your children to, like you said, not go through the things that you went through, but to know Christ in those things as well. Yeah. And I think that's, that's every parent's hope, right, is that our children would have faith um, and to not have to find faith the hard way, like some of us have. <laughs> like, and, and I just think that that's, that's such a powerful inspiration. Um, Shara, thank you so much. 
where can we find you at? Where, what is your Facebook, website, Twitter, whatever you want to give us? How can we get in touch with you if we want to find out more about your project and stuff? Yeah, I think the, the best way to do that is, um, is on sopeculiar.com um, or my, the game website in particular is closer than you know game.com. And so you can sign up for email updates. Um, there's a link there for our YouTube and Twitter and Facebook pages and all that stuff. Um, I'm trying to be more regular about posting updates. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to be better about that. But as we're, we're moving into the alpha stage of our game, um, and moving toward beta, really hoping to release in the spring of next year. So um, those updates will get more and more frequent and hope we'll have a lot more fun things to show. Amazing. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank you for watching and God bless. Thank Bye. you. Bye.